Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Are you looking to improve your land and the environment for your cattle? Today, we'll show you how the Natural Resources Conservation Service can help you enhance your soil, water, and all the natural resources on your operation. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxter. We all know it's a big job to manage the land and water resources on our cattle operations, especially as these commodities become more limited and valuable. That's where NRCS, the USDA's Natural Resources and Conservation Service, can play an important role. Today, we're going to take a closer look at this valuable agency and how it works with cattle operations all across the country. We start in Virginia, where Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Matt Fleck has a story of a farmer who worked with NRCS to develop a system to improve water quality in his community while also increasing his beef production through better forages. Virginia has a long history of cattle production on places like the Overhome Farm, where Ronnie Knuckles is the fifth generation on the land. For farmers like Ronnie, nearby waterways and highly populated areas create both challenges and opportunities. Virginia has challenges based on land use primarily. We're also in the Mid-Atlantic region, so we have lots of population centers and cattle production exists very closely with those mixed use areas of suburban, urban, and rural, and we also have lots of surface water in Virginia. So everywhere there's cattle, there's surface water pretty close by too. The farm here at Ronnie's is located in Gooseland County. He's within a mile of the James River, which is a major tributary and major watershed throughout Virginia that empties directly into the Chesapeake Bay. Although we're approximately two and a half hours from where the James technically enters into the bay, we all understand that, that all the runoff here from this farm operation ultimately would potentially impact the Chesapeake Bay. So water quality is a, is a big initiative in Virginia on agricultural lands and Ronnie, like many other livestock producers, recognize that and have taken uh, voluntary actions to exclude their livestock from the streams and ponds which would have an impact downstream. When we put in the stream exclusion, you know, when we first considered that, it was springtime, the grass was lush, and of course all the best grass is right down next to the creek. And you're looking at a 35-foot strip, and we had a lot of streams. Uh, with streams, a bank, and the wooded areas, we were excluding close to 50 acres of the 175 that I started with. So I was concerned trying to increase my herd size. You know, what's this lost? acreage going to do? You know, can it be compensated? In addition to fencing out his streams, Ronnie worked with NRCS to implement a rotational grazing plan that uses polywire temporary fencing to maximize the grass available for his cattle. When we brought in the stream exclusion program and the rotational grazing, we were able to manage the herd. We were able to control where they grazed, how long they grazed. For Ronnie, as well as most producers who consider doing this stream exclusion and taking out a 35-foot buffer around all these surface waters, that's a big hurdle for anybody to, to cross. And most of them are concerned that, oh, I'm losing so many acres of pasture land. How am I going to make up for that? And Ronnie took that leap of faith. He trusted his local conservationist. He went ahead and did it. He's increasing utilization of the forages, and he's increasing productivity, the health vigor of those forages across his pasture acres. So that increased yield and utilization combined more than make up for the small percentage of the pasture land that's now outside in that buffer. In the context of water quality improvement practices in Virginia, stream fencing, particularly the role of buffers, is important. Buffers are necessary so that we have a sequestration area for nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus and then sediments so that they don't reach those surface waters and then eventually the Chesapeake Bay. They don't have to be challenges viewed though as a reduction in the grazing area because the focus then really should be additionally in water quality improvement again back to the upland pasture improvement and that's where programs that we participate in as beef producers through 
conservation cost share and financial incentives like EQIP particularly give us the opportunity to do both well. Once the stream buffers and the grazing plan were in place, Ronnie quickly saw improvements to both his pastures and his cattle herd. To have good cattle, you've got to have good grazing. To have good grazing, you've got to have active, healthy soil. And it all comes back to that level. So I think it's a key component, and I think it's so often it's overlooked that you just don't, you look on top of the ground, you look across grass, you don't look down and think about what it's doing below. In addition to what it did for the soils and the grasses, uh, we gained control of the herd, which I didn't have. But with the better grazing, you know, we saw the quality of the animals improve also. The value to managing forage resources and creating uniform cattle is very simple. It's the bottom line. The better job you do managing forage resources, the more efficiently you put weight on cattle, and the more uniform cattle are, the better they package and the better they sell. In fact, Ronnie believes working with NRCS and putting conservation measures in place has made a positive impact on his cattle management and the returns his cattle bring him in the marketplace. With a different management style and the improved grazing, my weaning weights uh, probably have gone up 100 pounds per animal. And I'm, I'm selling them heavier sooner than I was six, seven years ago. So it's a total package. Ronnie is a prime example of how he, he started this conservation project with the exclusion of the, of the waters. But what it has allowed him to do is uh, kind of build the infrastructure of a grazing system. And what that does, it gives him complete management over the livestock that he's raising. So they're, they're more docile, he can, he's around them each day. Um, it's easier to get those cattle up when you gotta work them or load them or move them and so forth. But as far as a, a production benefit, overall the, the performance of his herd has increased year by year. Just being able to manage them in a system, keeping fresh, nutritious forage in front of them more days of the year, you know, th their body condition is excellent. They're rebreeding faster when that time comes. And uh, all of it plays together to improve performance of the livestock, uh, in a system that's beneficial to our natural resources. With clear running streams, healthy grass, and thriving cattle, Ronnie Knuckles is doing his best to carry on the family farming tradition. And he, like other producers across the country, can count on the expertise of the NRCS team to help them better manage their resources and keep them on their land. The NRCS mission is helping people help the land. So that's what we want to do is try to make sure that we conserve the natural resources and keep those families out on the farmer ranch. Well, the partnerships that we have with agencies like NRCS on the federal level down to the soil and water districts on the local level are probably even more profound in the southeast than anywhere. The southeast has about 40 percent of the nation's cow herd and most of those herds average from two to three dozen head. So it isn't a large beef operator's game to become involved in environmental stewardship. These are programs that are accessible to all of us and they're perhaps more widely used and most beneficial when they're used on smaller scales where we have pressure from urban sprawl and we need evidence that agriculture is doing the right thing. To keep production agricultural viable here in Virginia and across the United States, it's really important to be able to have good stewards like Ronnie uh, to work with him to open up the farm, to have whether it be school groups or other producer groups, uh, members of the community, to be able to come in and see how he's managing his herd, and how he's managing the natural resources in a way that's beneficial for everybody. I think the services provided by the Natural Resource Conservation Service is one that's available to everybody. It doesn't matter the size of the farm or where you're located, they're here to serve all of us and they've played a vital role here and I would encourage anybody, even if you think you have a good system in place, talk to them, call them, check the website, see what they have to offer, see what you can learn through that cooperation. Reporting from the Overhome Farm in Goochland County, Virginia, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you have conservation practices you'd like to put in place in your operation, you should start by visiting with your local NRCS office about the technical and financial assistance they can provide. Go to their website, nrcs.usda.gov, to find an office near you. 
Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to Utah to see how one ranch is working with NRCS to help prevent the spread of invasive plants and bring back damaged rangelands. We'll be right back. It's time to tune in to Tennessee for CattleCon 2021. CattleCon is the oldest and largest event in the beef cattle industry, and we're headed to the Music City, a city filled with the best music, great food, and some down-home Southern hospitality. And you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA trade show. It's our Super Bowl event. It's where all the producers come. We gain a lot of knowledge from producers who we've come to know over the years. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn, have fun, and connect with fellow producers from across the country. The value of it is I get to connect with tons of different producers around the United States and be able to learn from different people as well as meet and network with tons of different companies. Dynamic speakers, unbeatable education, all for cattle producers. So plan to tune in to Tennessee for CattleCon 2021. Visit convention.ncba.org for more. Today, we're talking about the Natural Resources Conservation Service and how the agency can help cattle producers improve their land and resources. It's important to remember that conservation planning can also help recover land that's being threatened by invasive species. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter takes us to a Utah ranch whose partnership with NRCS helped improve their rangeland resources. Just outside Utah's Zion National Park, brothers Eric and Klein Esplin are carrying on the family heritage of ranching in the rugged environment of Mount Carmel. My grandpa, Roland, had his homestead, um, originally homesteaded here, and my grandpa be, was pretty aggressive in his day, and he's put together pretty much the nucleus of what we have today. There's lots of challenges with, with uh, cattle ranching in Mount Carmel. Uh, Mount Carmel is in the southwest part of the state. Very popular area as far as people coming to visit it, but that also is a challenge. We're in a 12-inch precip zone, very rugged country, and I'm very proud that we're able to harvest and put this, this arid land into production. In this country, water is what controls everything and then having feed near the water. The challenge was developing better grass uh, species near the water and developing the waters, getting that piped into areas that would support cattle. Growing feed near water was especially challenging for the Esplins due to invasive trees that were overtaking their grazing lands. They looked to their local NRCS field office for help in developing a conservation plan that would help reclaim their pastures. These pinyon and juniper are very invasive. I mean, they'll, as you can, as you'll notice behind me, there's one little or two little trees right there that are trying to, that are growing, and before long there'll be three or four, and then four or five, and maybe a few more. They can just crowd out anything, any vegetation, any grass, and so it's really kind of a challenge to control them, just to give our grass a chance, grass and other species a chance but they're very aggressive. We started with the Esplins over 20 years ago, I believe, in our conservation planning. So we first figured out, um, what are your objectives for this land? They had some really invading juniper, which creates um, this bare ground, sheet and rail erosion, and what can we do about that? What, how can we help them? What kind of planting and seeding for range um, should, should we do? recommending those things that would be viable um, for a very long period of time to help uh, treat the land and heal the land. Once a plan is in place, it just really helps us because we have expertise is brought in that we don't have access to, uh, just left to our own devices. And they're able to help us to know what sort of treatments are available, what sort of things had ought to be done. And then we can, we can just bring a number of partners to the table that all want to benefit from this this type of a treatment and so we're able to all coordinate on what uh, the desired goal is 
so all of that put together moves us forward in, in getting these, these things on the ground and, and established. With a plan in place, the Esplins quickly began to see many improvements in the overall ecological balance of their rangelands. The short term, um, it's been really interesting to see just even after a year. It was very nice to see that you indeed have these grasses coming in, uh, crested wheatgrass, the intermediate wheatgrass, as well as a bit of clover and other uh, legumes, which are really important part of the diversity in the mix. And then um, right here around me, um, it's been about, I think, a 10-year treatment, and you can see everything popping back. And actually, the diversity here is quite great. Um, you also see natives coming back. You've got some of the native brush, um, which is still okay for great forage and a, a great working ranch. Once you can get, remove those trees, it is just amazing the amount of uh, production that, that you can can get from those areas. Once those trees are gone, get some uh, hybrid grasses in there that will utilize the, the moisture earlier in the spring uh, and then it'll hold through the summer into late fall. It just makes for a, a way to be able to use land that has traditionally never been used in cattle or any uh, type of production like that. And then I think what's interesting also is we'll see the wildlife just follow right into the, these same areas. So I think we're, we're, we're benefiting uh, the erosion problem, the production, we're helping production, we're helping wildlife. It's just an overall benefit all the way around to, to treating some of these grounds. Well, I think this is a great example of how this is going to be sustainable. This is a very sustainable system as we have it right now. Um, it has helped with um, holding back erosion. It has helped with um, any kind of water holding capacity. Um, the diversity of the above ground uh, plants also helps the diversity below ground in the soil biology and the soil health. So it's really helped create that whole system and a more holistic approach that's going to be long term um, um, a good thing. Conservation has long been a proud part of the Esplin's heritage and one they intend to carry on through their partnership with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. NRCS can help ranchers. Don't be afraid to, to work with them. They make it better. They're here to work hand in hand with you at, at making these ranching operations more sustainable and more productive and viable. So give it a whirl if you haven't tried it before because they will they will help you. I know in our our operation it's it's changed. It's changed the way we do things for the better. Our relationship with the NRCS has been really beneficial to not only my father's generation, but, but our generation, and we have worked with them quite extensively. We seem to have a personal r relationship with our local people, and that's what I think is where uh, things really benefit. When we're able to know them personally, we can sit down at the table with them personally, we can go over a map and, and they know our ranch and we can say this is an area that we haven't gotten much use out of but we think there's great potential there. When you have that personal relationship then that's when good things can happen. NRCS of course wants farmers and ranchers to be successful. Um, it, you know, it's helping people help the land, and um, help by helping the land, you're helping people. We're a voluntary agency that um, helps with uh, private landowners uh, across the country, uh, develop conservation plans uh, with our technical assistance and with science-based tools and, and planning processes. So we actually have uh, most of our people are out in the field um, and in the counties helping plan and uh, working with ranchers and farmers uh, to do really the good science work. We work on working lands and that's really important to us to keep those lands sustainable um, and uh, working with conservation. It's just neat to, get, to just see the land blossom and to just see it improve. I don't know if there's any better feeling in the world to just look out and say, 
I made that better, and that's going to be better for a lot, for many generations. And and so I, it's it's a it's great to be a part of that. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Reporting from Mount Carmel in southwestern Utah, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how the Natural Resources Conservation Service is helping a Louisiana rancher protect and improve his land. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere. Reimagined by you, for you. With improved visibility, better maneuverability, and more ways to customize. So you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Today, we're talking about the Natural Resources Conservation Service and how the agency helps cattle producers best use, manage, and protect their resources. Russell Nemitz introduces us to a Louisiana producer who is successfully mixing cattle and woodlands thanks to the help of the NRCS. When it comes to raising cattle, the weather and the landscape in southwest Louisiana are just a little bit different. Longleaf, uh, like this site here, is relatively rare on this landscape and has a beautiful herbaceous grassland plant community that's really good to, to, uh, to raise cattle on while you're growing timber as well. We started out in 1982 when we purchased 75 acres of a longleaf track. Uh, and we thinned the timber out to the point that sunlight hit the ground and we put a fence around it and prescribed, burned it and began to run some cattle. And from there we, we learned the, uh, the art and the science of uh, running cattle in the woods. Dave Daigle has a very unique operation. He does not focus strictly on cattle and he does not focus strictly on forest production. He's kind of right in the middle. He's, doing, he's getting the best of both worlds. By doing both, He's created a very sustainable production operation where he's getting quality forest products, he's getting quality livestock being produced, and probably putting in less inputs than if he was concentrating on either one. As a lifelong environmentalist, Dave understood his operation required a different approach to resource management, and he knew he needed a partner to help him. So he reached out to his local NRCS field office in order to build a conservation plan for his farm. To manage correctly, I knew I needed help. You know, we fight some endangered species. You know, we need help with burning. Uh, we needed help with a prescribed grazing plan. Just everything tying it together and getting, getting a consensus on what we need to do out there and then executing what we do. And it's, so much of it has been technical assistance, which has come from NRCS. I met Mr. Daigle in 2009. We started out with a conservation plan. We established a really good working relationship early based on uh, getting water and cross fences uh, to his land units in order to really home down a grazing plan. The conservation plan is, is something we could really hang our hat on. It's, it's concrete, it's there. We go to it and uh, very, very important for us to, to get what we need done here. Can't, can't do it alone. By managing all these values on his farm, he is able to increase his net production. Um, there's very little input, but there's a very high net 
and that's important in his operation because he doesn't spend all that money up front for input. We've used conservation practices through EQIP and the Conservation Stewardship Program to enhance his farm and to give him uh, financial ability to manage the way he needs to manage this place. NRCS did the first conservation plan for us in about 1982 or so. And then uh, NRCS has done subsequent ones on different tracks over the years. NRCS has come in since then and made some changes. Uh, this plan is about 11 years old on this particular track. So it's been um, an evolution process with NRCS to see the conservation plans get more sophisticated and take more conservation into mind on each track. Dave is, is very focused on, on management. He investigates a lot of different avenues to get him information and, and NRCS does play a role in that. So working through that conservation plan, he asks questions, but he listens to all the experts and then he, and then he evaluates how it can work for his place. Dave's conservation plan aims to work in concert with his unique natural environment. And over time, he's been able to improve his resources and his cattle production using fewer inputs. Prescribed burning along with grazing is necessary to move these forests forward into a production stance. Production is not Mr. Daigle's uh, objective. It's, it's natural resource management but he is able to use these cows as a management tool. And using that plan, we're producing more beef on these sites than we were before. For a number of reasons, number one, we're using our grass in a way that's, that means healthier grasses, healthier prairie. Follow natural processes and uh, don't fight mother nature, don't fight God, Let, just mimic what, what he put into play. You'll work less, You'll, you'll produce more, and, and that's, a, that's a big key, and uh, less impact on the environment. And another thing that Dave says all the time, uh, it's a philosophy you hear from other true conservationists, and that's leaving the land in a better shape for future generations, and he's certainly doing that. He's taking land that was either under or over managed and mimicking those natural processes bringing back to where it could be more sustainable and leaving it in better condition than he got it. Dave appreciates the support he's received from NRCS, not only with conservation planning, but with cost sharing that has helped him put his plan into practice. He also firmly believes it's a partnership that benefits NRCS as well. Conservation planning, that's, that's the roots of our agency. That's, uh, that's how we provide technical assistance to help people address their objectives and their problems. And uh, over the last few decades, we were, we were fortunate enough to also be able to provide financial assistance to help them. And so by sitting down and going through the conservation planning process, we can develop a schedule of operations to help you meet and achieve your objectives and then come in with the tools to help you implement that plan and those tools can be financial assistance. The EQIP program is very, very important because it's, it's specific to certain conservation practices that we do, like prescribed grazing or prescribed burning, brush control, uh, exotic species, invasive species, encroachment. It helps us on those a great deal. NRCS um, is a service to the local agriculture community. Um, we provide conservation planning to improve their operations, and we can even provide money to improve their operations, and that's the most fantastic thing. Reporting from the Longleaf Pine Savannah of Southwest Louisiana, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how NRCS has helped a Nebraska operation stay in business for four generations. We'll be right back. That certain time in the day when you can take a deep breath, knowing your work is done. That's the feeling Aspen products can create. Cost-effective alternatives to name brands that deliver the same results. Quillaxin is one of them. 
Use it to prevent and treat respiratory disease in your herd. Then breathe easy. Find them at Animal Health International. It's time to tune in to Tennessee. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2021. It's the biggest convention just for cattle producers. In Nashville, a city with amazing southern hospitality that's packed with the best food and great music. You can't miss it. So make plans now for CattleCon 2021 at the Gaylord Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. Tune in to convention.ncba.org for more information. How do you keep a cattle operation going strong for four generations? By doing everything you possibly can to manage and care for the land. Matt Fleck shows us how one Nebraska family is taking advantage of help from the NRCS to implement conservation practices and stay economically viable for the long term. The Maddox Cattle Company is a family-run cow-calf and yearling operation with deep roots in the sand hills of southwest Nebraska. The history of our ranch uh, goes back to my great-grandparents, Taylor and uh, Clara Maddox. They came out and homesteaded uh, in 1886. Well, this is the 131st year of our family being in the cattle business. And conservation of our ranch, of our natural resources, is the number one thing. I'm the fourth generation, my boys are the fifth generation on the ranch. So I think that lends itself to a, taking a long-term view of, of conservation. Certainly we've taken a view about being profitable, but the key point there is that conservation and profitability really go hand in hand. Over the years, the Maddox family has continually innovated to improve their care of the land. They've worked closely with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service and created a detailed grazing plan for their ranch. For me personally, a grazing plan is essential to proper management. Uh, I, I would be scared to try to graze cows without having a plan written down on paper. Your memory is short term, but if you have your records written down on paper, you can always go back and look at your records and see where you were at and what you were really doing. I wholeheartedly believe in a grazing plan because it keeps us on top of our game. It keeps us accountable for what we have out here. We often like to think of our conservation plans as outlines for an economic blueprint for a farm. So um, generally when you're going to do good conservation, particularly in the long haul, you're going to do good economic viability for an operation. So as we talk about making sure we don't overgraze plants on a range, making sure that soil biology helps cycle nutrients and improve that forage productivity, long term we're building in more resilience against drought or even floods. And we're also building in more flexibility as far as uh, decision making on the part of Mr. Maddox and his counterparts and how they want to invest in that increased productivity and improve the economic viability of their operations. Now we have more water development, more cross fencing, and we have more intensive range use. I think our grass has improved dramatically because of that. And I think we can lay that to the uh, great amount of, uh, of, of information and, and insight that we've gotten from our local NRCS uh, range conservationists and uh, on a national level too, about how they have provided that that great technical support and sometimes cost share support that it's allowed us to develop this ranch and help maintain the possibility that we can carry it on into the next generation. By working with NRCS in developing and implementing a conservation plan, the Maddox Cattle Company has been able to grow their cow numbers and sustainably increase their grass production. On our grazing plan, each guy has their own set amount of pastures that he has for each herd that allows him about 10 to 11 acres per cow-calf unit. And with doing that, we're able to scrunch our cows down into tight groups into, into smaller pastures than what you'd see in traditional places. And by, with that, we were able to come in, hit a pasture rather quickly, graze it quickly, get it down to the level that we'd like to see, use as many of the forages that are there without being detrimental to them, not overgrazing them. And that allows us to 
have, because we're going to be able to have a longer rest period behind what we're doing, we can, we typically try to build in a 90 to 100 days rest on our pastures. With doing that, we can have our, all of our plants can have ample rest, but with ample, and with ample rest, they're able to recover at least to the level where they were before we went in, if not progress a little bit past that stage. In doing so, we can add more numbers of numbers to our cows. We make the cows graze year round. They graze corn stalks in the winter time, and then we graze native range in the summertime, along with some other um, things like like cover crops and some irrigated grass. But uh, mainly is a is a is a year round grazing program, and I think it's been seven or eight years since we have last fed a cow, and uh, so we think that's one of our unique advantages here in our operation is that we have that good winter resource of corn stalks and we try to maximize our use of those corn stalks and our whole genetic program, our whole uh, system of calving is all geared to minimize our inputs on those cows. At the Maddox Cattle Company, both the land and the cattle are healthy and thriving. And with these kinds of results, the value of focused conservation planning with help from NRCS is clear. The benefits of conservation, uh, not only to our clients, to Mr. Maddox and his counterparts, is, can't be overstated. As we talked about, the fact is it's a partnership and it has to be something that's really advantageous for our clients and what they want to achieve on their respective operations. At the same time, investing in conservation not only makes his short-term viability better, but it makes the long-term viability better because we actually are protecting and allowing the land to heal and restore itself. I think that uh, NRCS has a wealth of knowledge about various different practices, whether it be in farming or in ranching and on soil conservation, water conservation, water quality, all of those topics. I think that the cattlemen bring something to the NRCS and that there is a level of practicality and a great deal of observation that happens by the individual cattle producers that they provide that feedback to NRCS which helps them refine and redevelop their programs so that their, their advice, their uh, recommendations are really tailored to that operation out in the country. Reporting from Southwest Nebraska, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still ahead on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you'll see a Virginia operation that worked closely with NRCS and ended up winning an Environmental Stewardship Award. We'll be right back. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. Hello, friends, and welcome to the NCBA's Cattlemen's Call podcast. Now, the goal of this podcast is to focus on the people in the beef industry. We all have stories to tell. We all have successes and failures, and it's always great to talk about all the hard work that we put in to our operations in our industry. So we're taking the time to talk about what everyone else is talking about for cattlemen and women to share what's on their minds. And make sure and subscribe to the Cattlemen's Call podcast today. Each year, the Environmental Stewardship Award program recognizes the nation's best operations for their stewardship and conservation efforts. Many winning operations have pointed to the Natural Resource Conservation Service as one key partner that helped them achieve their stewardship goals. Let's head to Virginia and meet one winner who knows a thing or two about the benefits of working with NRCS. In the Shenandoah Valley of Northern Virginia, Valley View Farms has family history going back more than a hundred years. Today, Mike and Susan Phillips work together caring for the cattle that graze the steep rolling hills of their 310-acre farm. 
I run a cow-calf operation and I background those calves, meaning once they're weaned, I'll background them into a, about a seven, eight weight. Everything is a forage base. I wouldn't call myself an intensive rotational grazing, but I'm pretty close to being intensive. It's a family operation. It's been in Mike's family for several generations, and so we do it ourselves. That's why we went to rotational grazing in order to be able to do it ourselves and be mostly hands-on with the cattle. In addition to rotational grazing, Mike uses a mix of no-till seeded forages and cover crops to keep his cattle grazing nearly year-round. And he's passionate about protecting and improving soil health. The hat uh, that I wear on my head says the soil is meant to be covered. When this land was created, it was covered. It's meant to be covered. I want to do, follow exactly what the hat says. And I try to preach that to people, keep something on that ground all the time to protect it. Mike's passion for the soil began with his father, now retired, who had to take over working the farm at age 12 when his own father passed away. From the start, Mike's dad wanted to restore land that had been badly eroded. And that soil erosion just bothered my father. He hated erosion. Together, Mike and Susan have spent much of their lives working to stop soil erosion, starting with conservation plans that began when Mike took over the farm more than 35 years ago. It had erosion problems, and uh, Mike and I stood here and, and talked about how he might work to uh, slow that erosion down. Seeing what he's done with this since that time, I see that he's reduced the erosion drastically from where it was uh, in 1978. Another major challenge here is controlling water runoff. Not far away is the Shenandoah River, which ultimately leads to the Chesapeake Bay. So Mike has installed watering systems throughout his 22 grazing units and fenced his cattle out of the creeks. All the sensitive areas, streams, wet areas, sinkholes, they have all been totally excluded, some back since 1986. Mike has also fenced cattle out of wooded areas, planted trees, and set aside a portion of his land as wildlife and pollinator habitat. He not only cares for his own land and cattle, but also works off the farm as a technician for the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service. This connection between somebody's asked me, are you a full-time farmer or full-time NRCS? I said, I'm both. The biggest advantage of Mike having an active dynamic farm and working with NRCS is that the, he has credibility with the farmers. Farmers love him. They say, hey, this guy's doing it. He's not just talking about doing it. Grateful to those mentors who have helped guide him, Mike is committed to sharing his knowledge with others. He's opened Valley View Farms to a wide variety of students, tours, and research projects. This is my way of repaying my debt to my mentors, is doing what they did for me, given the, the commodity of time. You can read the books, but this is my classroom right here. And this is where, you know, you can kick the dirt, look at each other face to face. Whether it's protecting the soil, trying new cover crops, or even restoring their historic bank barn with timber harvested on the farm, Mike and Susan are committed to making Valley View Farms a leading example of the never-ending effort to improve the care of the land. Our legacy will be that we tried to do things the right way. We feel that these acres here are ours just for a short time and that we are simply passing through and God has given us this to take care and to bring it up to a better standard. My father took it from this level to this level and they were able to me to take it to this level and I want the next person that takes here take it to the higher level. I want to keep pushing it better. Right here, when you protect that ground right there, it'll take care of you. You feed her, she'll feed you. If you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend Baxter Black. Stay with us.
We'll be right back. If you'd like to know more about NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and have an opportunity to support our effort to create valuable news, information, and education just for cattle producers, then check out our website, cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. At Leachman Cattle, we're committed to building more profitable cattle. As a third generation seed stock producer, our family has been in this business for over 80 years. Today, we have the best technology ever to build more profitable cattle. Our dollar profit index is a leader in the industry to help you balance all the traits that drive your bottom line. Give us a call or go to www.leachman to learn more. Sometimes the price of hay can be daunting to horse owners. I keep our ranch horses up in the corral, and when hay gets above 10 bucks a bale, I actually weigh each feeding. Now Clyde had a little band of brood mares, and to save money on his feed bill, the neighboring farmer let him pick up tags after the alfalfa field was cut. Tags are what's left after the baling is complete. Well, one hot evening, he and his wife took their old pickup into the neighbor's field to pick up tags. She drove slowly down the rows, followed by Clyde, who was pitchforking hay into the bed. She had to put the truck in first and low so he could keep up. It just sort of crawled along. As the pickup turned sideways to Clyde, he tossed in a forkful. It felt heavy, he thought. He glanced up and watched the hay float into the bed and a three and a half foot snake shoot out of the cloud of stems and leaves, arc through the open window and slap onto the dashboard. He shouted a warning to his wife, which was not necessary. She was already halfway to the house. The truck puttered along in first and low. Clyde raced to catch up. He was running alongside, trying to reach the ignition and the snake was now sitting in the seat and struck out at Clyde. Clyde fell back and cartwheeled into the ground. As he watched from the gopher's eye view, the little pickup banged over a ditch, punched through the wire fence and shoved its way into the mare pasture. The mare stampeded across the pasture and crashed through the wire on the other side and escaped into the desert. Finally, the little truck stopped and it took him two hours to find and gather the mares in the dark, and they went to bed exhausted. Next day, armed with a hoe, Clyde opened the truck door as his wife stood by with a cell phone sure that she would have to call 911 and report a snake bite victim. Clyde poked and prodded around in the cab and then carefully tilted the front seat forward. He screamed. His wife screamed, and then he fell back laughing, hysterical in relief. She peeked inside and saw a grumpy old gopher snake looking up at her as if to say, why can't we all just get along? This is Baxter Black from out there. Now a BQA tip from the Beef Quality Assurance Program. We know cattle are uh, a great resource. They take uh, a lot of materials, plants, things that are uh, unusable in many other circumstances, whether it's uh, uh, grazing crops, uh, grasses, uh, co-products that are available, and we turn that into a very nutritious, dense product. But in order to do that and to be effective in doing that, we know that cattle need to, we need to have the, the basics there in the framework to accomplish that. So nutrition is a big part of BQA from the standpoint that we need to uh, not only uh, make sure that animal is healthy, but we do that through making sure we have a, uh, providing the adequate nutrition, adequate vitamin minerals, uh, and certainly a good clean water source for those cattle. Uh, part of that entails uh, looking at those feed resources, uh, getting them evaluated and analyzed so we know exactly what we're providing to that animal, and just to set that animal up for success in utilizing those products. Find out more about Beef Quality Assurance at BQA.org.
One of the most important things you can do to make sure the beef industry stays sustainable is by joining me and thousands of other cattle producers and becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. I've seen firsthand how every day the NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. and in Denver is working to protect the interests of cattle producers all across the country. But they can't do it alone. You can help by becoming a member. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Over the years, the cattlemen and cattlemen cameras have been there as NRCS personnel work side by side with farmers and ranchers. Let's take a look at some of those great shots with this week's Legacy Photos. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.